Hi, I'm Silvio and this is part one of the motorized camera slider with pan and tilt features full tutorial. To be honest, I knew that this tutorial might have been completely out of interest for the majority of the members of this channel. Why? Simply because I will not use any styrofoam, I will not build some new type of stairs or display any building on top of my plywood. But I also think that nowadays having a good way to film your creations, it is important to give proper credit to what you have spent hours building and to share it correctly, fantastically, with your siblings, with your parents, with your social community. And for the others who have immediately appreciated me asking if I should have done this uh, um, tutorial, yes or no, here I am. So, generally, you will find someone like me in the first minutes of the tutorial showing you the final result and then, okay guys, now let me show you how to build it. But no guys, I don't have a finished project because as always, I'm used to do it in real time with you. I just have all the components, but nothing is built yet. I also don't know if every component will fit together and fit with the aluminum bars, with uh, the aluminum 2080 uh, uh, V slot stick. So big surprise for you, big surprise for me. But anyway, I planned it a little bit on my 3D software. So let me just show you quickly what I want to achieve. Uh, let's get me <laughs> in action behind my computer. So guys, as I just stated, I don't have a full project, a full camera slider to show you because as always I will build this step by step. I don't have uh, done something previously, I just have planted it in my 3D software as always my beloved uh, Rhinoceros or Rhino 3D. Uh, here is the overlook it will have once completed. So the long uh, aluminum bar, in my case it will be variable from 1.5 meters up to 4.5 meters but you can have it uh, the length you want. The two sides um, foot there, the two sides fit there with the holes here for the tripod for support the slider on top of a tripod uh, because this yes it is intended to be used on a table on a flat surface but even on the on a tripod to allow uh, pushing it inside your uh, village or whatever you want to do then this will be the the carriage that will have the wheels there. I just disabled the view of the wheels there because it will be too complex and too populated for this first preview. And uh, so this will slide with some wheels there attached to the V slot of the aluminum V slot bar. And then this is the heart that will contain inside here the brain and this is the system that will uh, slide here and the motor will be attached here for the sliding purpose then you will have the pan motor here that will rotate and have this big circle rotate around its proper axis and then one last motor here for the tilt so this will slide, this will rotate, and this will rotate uh, towards the ceiling or towards the ground, okay? Uh, maybe I can show you, I will ungroup this, okay? And this, ungroup, okay?
okay so this can rotate this way let me go this way so I can rotate it this way I will stop okay so this will rotate now you see that this can rotate through this motor here that will be, be stable will be connected with all the thing but this will rotate very 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 simple for me maybe not for you but it will be yeah, very understandable uh, once I will start building everything my goal for this first part will be to complete at least the top here without with the motors with at least two or three motors yes all the motors and the and, and anything else guys uh, the electronics is for next step the last step obviously will be to have all these assembled on the long aluminum bar using some belt here to attach the motor to the um, aluminum uh, to the aluminum to the to the structure to the full structure and allow the sliding enough this is what i will uh, achieve with my my tutorial let's go back to where i was thanks good thank you silvio for that little introduction now let me quickly recap what i wanted to achieve here very quickly with all I have in here before changing scenario and getting started with the building process. The new camera a slider that will be controlled by a PS4 gamepad or PS3 gamepad. So PlayStation 3 gamepad or PlayStation 4. This is PlayStation 4 gamepad. This is PlayStation 3 gamepad. So Bluetooth control it. I will repeat this constantly, constantly or along this tutorial. The, the program, the libraries and everything else will work only with original gamepad from Sony PS4 or PS3. With 95% of the aftermarket controllers, so non-original controllers, the system will not work. The Bluetooth will not work. Why? Simply because the components, the hardware components inside, let's say, the fake controllers don't have the same specs, the same specification as imposed by Sony. So, yes, it worked with your PlayStation in some way because they tested it. But here you will need a more precise connection, a more precise Bluetooth connection to make this whole system work. And only the original controllers, the original gamepad have that. Believe me, I experienced myself that little problem. And right now, I have, I think, four non-originals, four, let me call them fake controllers, unused, that I cannot use anymore. And because I also open them to check the hardware inside, I cannot make any return to Amazon. Amazon will uh, absolutely not accept my returns. So I've wasted a lot of money to be certain of what I'm saying right now. Original controllers only. I don't tell you to buy some new controllers. This one is new. You can uh, still find on marketplaces PS4 new controllers, original from Sony. Okay, this is original from Sony. And you cannot find new PS3 controller on the market. If you have them, good, yes. 
If you don't have them, you, you can buy original controller, original PS4 controller, yes, but buy and try not to be scammed with a fake original on my other marketplaces such as eBay or even Amazon. But for the non-new, it is best to search them on eBay, I think. This one comes from eBay, this one comes from Amazon, this one comes from eBay. This one is new, this one is not new, it is used, okay, uh, yeah. I've cleaned it because it was messy, because it was used, but then it works and I will show you it works. So, uh, not brand new, it can be used or refurbished or second hand, but they need to be new, original, sorry. The components, the components are all here, guys. 3D printed, you have just seen all these components assembled in my, um, in my uh, 3D model, and those are 3D printed, okay guys, uh, and I will show you why. So, do you need a 3D printer? Yes, uh, unfortunately you will need a 3D printer, but nowadays it is very important even for adding, uh, I don't know, uh, street furniture or figurines to your Christmas villages to have uh, a 3D printer. This is the new base, guys. All this is printed, 3D printed, using standard layer, 0 0.2 millimeters uh, layer, with the infill of 30%. What is the infill? It is what it is inside. You have the walls and then the inside. It can be empty, so the structure will not resist anything and will break even with the smallest force applied to it. Or it can be 100% filled, like having, I don't know, um, full metal inside, uh, like having... Uh, pillars like having uh, normally used pillars in building constructions those are filled with 30 percent in fill it is a common term used by all 3d printers 30 percent so they have a good mechanical resistance yes they are very rigid etc but those ones that will support all the all the mm, the weight those are the feet that will support all the weight and this is the hole for the tripod. So imagine that instead of having this, I will put the tripod here on top of the of the screw. Let, let, let me let me show you directly. I will uh, get there. So let me rephrase this. The two feet, the two foot, the two feet, the two bases will be used like this. Okay. And this with obviously some washers and then some nuts here, some washers and some nuts will support all the weight of what you will have here, the the aluminum bar, etc. So this is printed not with 30% in fill, but with 60% of in fill. This means all this can be printed. Uh, f vary from 10 minutes up to some hours for the mox complex. But the two feet there took me 26 hours to print because they have 60% of infill, but they are absolutely resistant. They will not break at all and the base will support all the weight they need, it needs to support all the weight. I've used this in fill only for the base that will support all the weight from the aluminum, these lots, this is 20 millimeters by 80 millimeters. This is a this lot because look guys how it is shaped there. You have some V 
v-shaped slot here you have some slots and they are v-shaped here you will roll the wheels that will have the slide so here is the mount of the camera this is the base that will be used to mount those two pieces to get the slider rolling on one bar 1.5 meters aluminum bar v slot bar or two or three connected them together and this is the first step I will show I will show you. So use I think not every components I will leave, left, leave out one, two, three, four, and the two fit components for set part two. This is very interesting, but I will not tell you what it is used for. So step-by-step -step guide on how to assemble the main important thing. Then obviously you will have the brain to build, okay? The brain to build, but it is for a next part. Uh, difficult? No. Uh, each time I complete a part, I will post, in this case, I will post a link on my GitHub GitHub page, GitHub is, uh, or GitHub is uh, um, a sharing, uh, a sharing platform, a sharing online platform where all these kind of projects can be shared. So each time I complete a part, I will upload something you will need. All this is already designed. I will give you all the STL files to print this by yourself. I will use some bolts, I will use some nuts, I will use some washers, and please don't be scared by what I have placed there, inside there, don't be scared. Then three stepper motors, pan, tilt motor, and the biggest one is the slide motor. Good, let's start. But first, allow me to specify once again that this is not entirely totally 100% my idea, I based my work on inspiring myself by two works. One, the main original one, uh, is from Isaac Chasteau, as I already told you. But uh, the programming and uh, the PCB board and everything else didn't suit my project, so I only used the part of his design remodeling the bearing, especially because he, he, he has not used this kind of bearing. And then another work from Christoph Lena, uh, an European one that, based, uh, um, that I took some inspiration, but even his code was not perfect, and, but I will get there. Uh, so I perfected a, a long project. This took me at least a month to perfect this, but I uh, rewrote part of the of the code that will be inserted in the brain of the system to control everything, to allow PS3 and PS4 controllers to be used together. Is like Sarto coupled uh, Arduino Nano with uh, uh, USB uh, with a Bluetooth module or a ESP32 module, if you or so if you. Uh, need them to make this working and it needed an app to work to get it work uh, uh, not using a computer because uh, <laughs> this system only work at the way it's the use of a computer so you pass the information from the PS3 controller or PS4 controller or Xbox controller to the computer and the computer controller to a Python or Raspberry to a Python app or through your Android or Raspberry, etc. The, the slider. No, I didn't want something that. Uh, then Christoph Lenner did a similar thing, excluding the Arduino, but having <coughs> a big problem with it. <coughs> Sorry. But he had a big problem uh, with his coding that didn't took in consideration the user that, um, gamepad, the user the controllers. Anyway, uh, we'll get there uh, in some days, in some hours, I don't know yet. But 
I started uh, reassemble plenty of things, remodel it here, remodel it there, and use some alternative things. So it's let's say it is part original from me and part not original from me. But let's go and much more. This has never been explained step by step by anyone, especially the robot. Every system that has a sliding effect or a rotating effect need a bearing, a ball bearing, in order to get everything um, rotating smoothly. Here it is a bearing, I will build a bearing that will ease the rotation of the pan movement. So the ball bearing will be composed mainly with, um, uh, of four elements, then a fifth one that will be used in some hours because I will need this to dry. Ball bearings means balls. Those are six millimeters diameter spheres. I can show you closely. Six millimeters uh, steel balls uh, used in some uh, BB, BB weapons, I think. Yes, BB weapons or something like that. Instead of having them plastic, I choose to have them steel. Okay? And these will be the components of the bearing. Here I have the placements of, for the spheres. This is the design. Please note that you have no holes, no little holes here, and you have some little holes all around the perimeter on the top. This needs to be maintained as a top. This is a symmetrical with inside a little groove that will allow the spheres. You see that the spheres, if I turn this, it will remain in the groove. That will be the mechanism of the, of the, of the bearing. Normally, when you build the such thing, when you 3D print this, you will have some joining section there. That is not a, a big problem. And if you want, you can send it and I will do it right now. Okay, not to send it, but send paper it. I have a, <coughs> a thick one, this is a 280 sandpaper, this is a 2000 I think, yes 2000. This is a very smooth sandpaper and I will quickly send paper this inside the proof you have here a little, I don't know if I can show you this, but here you have the joining section that has a little bump there. So I will quickly do this. It doesn't need to be precisely perfect. Okay, then some smooth one. The same thing you may have with the other components that are not important. So the spheres will uh, get inside the groove there. So this is the main component. I will place this like that. Okay, so inside the big circle, the other circle, the other circle with the holes towards the up, then I will start with one of those two elements, they are symmetrical and they will be glued together one on top of the other, like that, and then I will place the, the spheres inside. Let me have also this a little and uh, sandpaper, like that, it don't need to be perfect. 
because you will have some uh, little space between the elements. This will only prevent the spheres from uh, escaping from the system. It is the way I get the spheres inside the system. These two, here you have, this is a little less bump. Okay, so I will use one of them inside. So it is uh, some sort of bigger diameter, shorter diameter. So it needs to be the bigger diameter towards the bottom, okay? Because those two elements will be superposed like that. And you have the same groove here that will allow the spheres to get inside the groove once they are... I catch it! Uh, my reflex are not that bad. So I replace one of them inside, okay, like that. Then I will start to push the spheres inside the holes, guys. If I move it, I will lose everything. But let me show you what I meant. This is the way I will get them together. Inside the hole, then like that. Half this way and half the other way. So the spheres will escape, if not maintained there, with the two components of the bearing. So I will place them, I think, 25. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. 25 spheres, 6 millimeter spheres. Good. And this will slide, okay? Now, I will need to use the other symmetrical part on top of the first one. As close as possible, in order to have this a closed system with the spheres not escaping from the system. Good. I will use some super glue, then wait for at least at least a couple of hours. Here I have some thick paper because I don't want this to to be I don't want the spheres to escape, and I will use some super glue. There is no perfect way to glue some PLA. This is PLA plus, polylactic acid. This is a plastic that came from corn, so this is vegetable plastic. And there is no effective way to glue together PLA plus. Uh, and you, the most used is super glue, like this one, cyano acrylic glue, super glue, but it will need a couple of hours of drying time, okay? So, I will get everything in place, I will use some super glue, not too much super glue, but I will get the super glue on the narrowest, on the shorter diameter, on the little diameter there, like that. Some little drops all around. Like that. Then I will remove some excess of glue. A little that, like that, 
and then I will try to be as precise as possible okay it's already steady okay you can see that the, the spheres will not escape from the system <clears throat> but it's better if I will wait for some uh, at least a couple of hours uh, before uh, using and the system so that's the reason why I started with this bearing there so it is already stable you can see all the system gets well together and <coughs> the spheres are not glued are not glued with the inner circle okay but it can slide freely okay it will be more mm, visible once it will as it has dried good now no more spheres to use let's start from the base this is designed to be the base 3d printed yes supports you may use them or not this is printed this way flat and then everything is built on top but you have some mini holes there, some squared holes that may be complicated to print. So I used some supports, and the supports uh, were inside those little rectangular holes you have in here. Everything else is printed and it doesn't need any support at all. Hold. Uh, I remember I uh, recap once again 3D printed 0 2 millimeters layers 30% in film. Okay, sorry for the ding ding. The, the battery will soon die. Then let me start with 1, 2, 3, 4 nuts. Okay, I will use <coughs> all along this entire tutorial M3 nylock bolts. Sorry, M3 nylock nuts. Those are nuts. Square nut, hexagonal nut, nut, and M3. So, 3 millimeters in diameter, the center hole, and threaded. Nylock. What does it mean? It means that those little nuts here inside, let me take something to show you. It's little inside of some plastic. Nylon, that's why nylon plastic inside. This is blue, I think, or blackish blue inside it that will prevent the nut to unscrew itself from the screw or the bolt. Nylock, because it is nylon, nylon lock system. Those are nylock nuts. I will use. Mm -hmm. Four of them in these holes here. <coughs> the design is a little under measured in comparison to the real dimension of the uh, of the nuts and of the bolts and of the screw. This because uh, it is, is intended to not have the bolts escaping from their position once placed there. So I will need to force them inside like that. Okay. And it is good. Nylock inside. So 
mm -hmm. and use them and it's perfectly aligned with the surface. You can see that maybe I can push it one more, once more, a little more, more. I don't want to break anything, so I push it in inside the, the hexagonal hole. That will prevent the, uh, the nut to escape from its position. I will repeat this. for the other three that I will need. So I will place it like that. Okay, four and three nylock nuts insert. Then guys, here I have some rectangular holes. I have one, two, three, four, five, six of them. Inside those holes, you need to insert some squared M3 nuts. Guys, the thinnest possible. Those were a little too thick, but these are the only ones I found uh, quickly uh, on uh, Amazon uh, and <laughs> in any other uh, hardware store. So I had to enlarge a little bit those holes. You can see that they are they have been tooled. Mm -hmm. I used the some uh, exacto knife like this one. I used an exacto knife like this one to carefully enlarge getting this work here, then that, 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 that. To enlarge a little bit the holes because I haven't found some very thin uh, Mm, square it and three nuts. <coughs> but before doing that, uh, you need to check if what you have found, what you have both, is good for uh, your for the original holes that uh, you have. Once everything will get out from the three D printer. Okay, I need. A little bit of glue inside each one, super glue, just a little amount to get them. And don't worry about the glue getting um, inside the threaded hole because anyway this will be uh, secured by a, a screw or a bolt, okay? Center it. <clears throat> Let's close this. <coughs> and for the first time, I don't have messy ends. The two, <clears throat> the two lateral parts that I will add here, like that. Okay, like. that oops sorry and this way okay okay it's for later they are not symmetrical they are the same age but they are not symmetrical this will <coughs> uh, need 
the motor for the tilt to be applied, this will not. But here, once again, I have two rectangular holes and to, that I will be that will be used to secure here to secure this these sides here to the base okay so inside here the same way a little bit of super glue get serious. Let's have them by a little bit. <coughs> Here I have a gear. This is a particular gear guys. Uh, let me show you precisely. This is like having a little v-shaped um, gear. So herring bone uh, gear, particularly of airing bones that will allow movements, coupling of movements parallel like that. I will show you precisely in some moments what I intend with that. Okay, here, uh, I don't have cleaned this yet and I will do it right now, okay. This is the support I've used, okay? And here also I have some residual for the support inside here. Okay, I don't know if you can see it, but inside here you have this side that have a bigger diameter than this side. You have a little ledge here, okay? And I will explain why in some seconds. I've already told you maybe yes or maybe not that the system will have an automatic zero pointing system, an automatic hole to zero system. <coughs> what I mean with that? The system will be able to self slide or to self-rotate to the zero point of the rotation or the sliding. Uh, to allow more quickly uh, homing point for everything. You get the home for the slide, the home for the pan and the home for the tilt. If something is tilted, let's say at 15 degrees, with the old system, it gets automatically to the zero homing, to the zero degrees uh, angle. Same thing for the pan, same thing for the slide. I don't think I will ever use them with the kind of uh, shooting of video I do, but uh, <coughs> it is good to uh, use them and to show you what it is. The system will use some whole sensor, H-A-L-L -L sensors. Those little things that are similar to some very tiny transistors, but are the sensor. They can sense magnetic things. So, each time a magnet will be in front of this, it can get an impulse to the system. So if I place this little sensor, this whole sensor, H -A -H -A -L -L, uh, H-A-L-L sensor, in front of something that is magnetic, I will get, okay guys, I found something magnetic, stop here. 
So this will be inserted some way here in just some minutes. But here on this gear that will get the tilt movement of the system, I need something magnetic. What is more magnetic than neodymium magnets? The most powerful magnets in the world. Okay, those are very difficult to disassemble. Six millimeters in diameter by two millimeters in thickness. Six by two. Okay, I can maybe measure this. Those are six millimeters no. diameter. I don't know if you can see it, but this is six millimeters in diameter and two millimeters in thickness. I will use two of them inside this hole in this herringbone gear. <coughs> I will add some super glue. Good, they are very powerful magnets. So each time the whole sensor will get in front of the magnet, it will signal to the system, to the brain, guys, I've reached the home position for the rotating herringbone tilt gear. <coughs> now, let's have the herringbone gear there. Uh, so I have one, two, three, four. This is get away. No, sorry, I will trash it right now. So now let's get to the scene another component. The U shaped bracket I call it. It will be the main support for the cameras photo camera, video cameras, or for the phone. You, will have, you have a set of holes here to adapt to whatever dimension you have with your DSLR camera, photo camera, video camera, or head mounting. And if this is too short, you just need to have a higher head there and then mount everything on top of this, okay? Otherwise, this is a little too narrow, okay? This is the main support of everything and it is a very durable and very thick. So this has a thickness of almost nine, eight, eight, nine millimeters. So it is very thick and with an infill of 30%. I have here four holes that will fit the M3 Nioc nuts. So let me take four. And as I did previously, Okay, and four. Good, it's, n it's not a mistake that it is not symmetrical. It is intended to be like that. It's not a flow in the design. 
<coughs> and this is not for the motor, this is for the airing bone gear. You see that here I have a hole that has with the herring bone gear it has two diameter one inside diameter that is smaller at a certain point than the other here two okay i have the same thing why this will slide okay will rotate not slide will rotate <coughs> and it needs to rotate easily not having frictions anywhere of any kind that's why those holes here I will use some F6230 ZZZ so 2F Six three no sorry F six two three Z Z bearings normally bearings are cylindrical and all the same diameter all along this side here but these those that are oops that are 3 by 10 by 4 that means that the inside all is 3 millimeters in diameters as M3 the outside is 10 millimeters 1 centimeter and the thickness is 4 millimeters from this point here to that but it has also a little edge here a little flange a little something that has at some point a larger diameter. This is used mm -hmm. to prevent the bearing from getting outside of this hole here. Okay, that's why I need to push this, trying not to ruin it inside the hole perfectly horizontally. I need some tool. Good. A little piece of uh, wood and then and the bearing is there the having one gear it has another hole like the previous one so let's get inside once again the same with the little hatch here, the little flange towards me, towards the out and now <coughs> let's start with some M3 screws or bolt okay and some allen Keys. Okay, let's have four and three 18 millimeters. I think those are 18 millimeters. The threaded is 18 millimeters, obviously, yes. And I will use them like that and like that. I need maybe some allen maybe some other things yes i prefer having some other tools let me do this maybe this one is good yes obviously yes and so those are m3 18 millimeters threaded they are socket caps bolts okay cylindrical socket caps bolt you will need another key or tip to 
uh, screw them or in this case <coughs> a tool with a similar tip okay and I will go this way and then here I have the M3 nylock nuts and so I will do this And four. Okay, this is assembled. Here I have some different gears, and they are also uh, herringbone gears, but they are different in the dimension here. The um, the distance between the feet, the tools are different okay <clears throat> even if placed like that they are different one will be suited for this coupling here the other one will fit the pan motor i didn't know why the the one that is uh, that will be used for this This is not fitting inside, so here, this one will be used like that, okay? And I will have the motor here, and this will be used to drive, to rotate the tilt mount. Um, how will I use this? Here I have the motor, the stepper motor and I will not explain how a stepper motor work but if you are interested just tell me and I will do it separately in a very little mini tutorial, okay? This will be the stepper motor, this is a Neman 17 stepper motor with an angle of rotation of step of 0 0.9 degrees. So each step will be of a 0 0.9, a little less than a one angle in movement and a complete uh, round will be obviously of 360 uh, degrees. So each impulse it receive, it can go 0 0.9 degrees in to, towards one direction or the other, clockwise or counterclockwise. <coughs> and I will assemble this like that. How? Using a square head nut, obviously, and I've marked them because I have two of them. Maybe, yes, this one is for this little one because I have a purple and purple here, purple on the gear, and purple here on the nut. So I will get them inside for later. So here I will have an M3 nut here like that
And then this little thing here is not in hand a group screw. It is an M3, 5 millimeters. Uh, grab screw. What is a grab screw? It is a screw and <coughs> and three threaded, obviously, but that has no head, so no way. But it it has a hole inside. It's like it is a little cylinder with uh, emptiness in with a, a hole in it, but not true completely true it. That will need a Allen wrench to use like that, and that will be suited like that. And I will screw it like this, preventing the system to have a head here, a screw head in, or bolt head interfering with the rotation. And so I will use this like that and please take a, a look at the shaft here it's not a perfect cylinder it has a little flat surface there it's not a complete cylinder there you can see maybe from here that this is a flat surface, so it's not a perfect cylinder, it has a flat surface there that will be used to have this M3 nut here in contact with the flat surface, like that, allowing the grab screw to perfectly grab on the shaft, like that, having it, <laughs> I'm trying to remove it, I can't remove it. And then the motor will be placed like that, the motor will rotate and, uh, and everything will be coupled together. For now, <coughs> I will not straighten the screw there, the group screw, because I will need to move this a little bit later. But this is how the motor the stepper motor will be coupled to the tilt section to have the tilt section rotating. This is for the next half hour. It's not finished. I will introduce you another element. Good. It is time to use or to assemble the first power sensor. I will use, I don't care about the colors for now, some <coughs> testing wires that I use generally with my Arduino project. The advantage of these kind of wires is that they are connected together to them, they are tightened together and will prevent some mess thing. I will place <coughs> the sensor like that here with the wires coming down and this will be placed like that from the outside in a moment, but let's do some some soldering for now. I will need to solder this little sensor to the wires. I don't need them to be like that, but let me just do the work. And so I will start for the first time soldering something that is very, very easy to do. Guys, here I have a little soldering station with regular temp temperature, okay? And I have a 
soldering iron with a relatively uh, small tip and those are interchangeable okay guys the tips can be changed easily like that and replace it in every normal common soldering station or soldering iron okay so I will switch this on of uh, the temp around 370 Celsius because I'm in Europe so these work in Celsius degrees then I will have something to clean my solder teeth it's a brass sponge there then some thin wire this is a uh, 0.6 millimeters uh, with some fluxant inside it. Fluxant are something used to desoxidate, to, uh, to remove oxidation from the components. It is uh, um, lead free, only uh, tin and copper, a little of, of cop, cop, copper inside. Then I will have three shrinking tubes. By chance, I have one for each color I will be using. Then, I generally use for this kind of precision work uh, an arm there that will help me, but you can use whatever you want. So, let's start by removing what I will not use, the two sides there. I will not use them, so I removed them. Now, let me have the wires removed a little piece of each wire. The outside and inside you will find some little tiny copper wires Okay, I will turn them a little bit like that. Okay, I will use a little piece, a little piece of each shrinking, each shrinking tube for the three wires, the three cords, okay, then I'm going to prepare the three wires, adding a little of, okay, I'm gonna clean the tip, like that, then I will add a little amount of of tin on each of the three wires, they will change color. The technique is to hit behind, under the wire and then the wire get hot and then I place the little tin wire on top of the hot, of the heated wire. Okay, so the tips have changed color, now they are the same color as the tin. <coughs> For now, I don't need to, to mind which color is connected to which pin. And I'm going to start with the yellow one, so I will use yellow shrink, each shrinking tube here. Maybe it is too long if the connector is the legs of the of the whole sensor are too long. I you can cut them a little bit like that. Then 
once again like that I will apply a little amount of tin on top of the legs there like that in this way I don't need to use four ends to get everything soldered together I simply need to reheat one single part I will start there and then like that so it's soldered already together so the, 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 the secret here the little tip here is to have so the to have thin thin wire on both of <coughs> the um, the the pieces you need to solder together. Where is the green one? It is here. Don't forget to use the shrinking tube. like that and then the same thing and for the third one two this this way I will be it will be easier to solder like that and the three of them are soldered together. Now, for the heat shrinking tube, you can use obviously a lighter, okay, or anything or uh, flame or something with a free flame, but it is a little dangerous. Now I'm isolating each one like that, but I prefer to use this tool here that is nothing else and I will place it <coughs> a little more <coughs> <coughs> towards the left. I use it the smallest um, soldering station that has no heat power, that has not uh, some uh, heat blow. Normally I have a, a, a bigger one that has this dimension, maybe one day I will show you, that has also some way of soldering, not through metal contact, not through the tip, the hot tip to be in contact with something, but with hot blowing Air and this is used as a way of shrinking the tubes. But in this case, I will use the uh, heat gun away from the camera, I don't want to ruin it. And then, like that, and uh, very quickly because otherwise I will burn everything and done the three 
its shrinking tubes are now shrinked and they are connected with the wires. Okay, and this is the quick way to get everything done. Then I will place everything maybe this way like that okay that's remove the end now each time the sensor will get in contact with the magnet it will signal okay i've reached the home okay i know i already said that <coughs> let's have a look at the other lateral here i still need to open this hole from the other side this is the hole that will allow the magnet field to pass through so it's ne it needs to be free open Let's have these like that. Good. And then let's have four M8 and M3. 8 millimeters long 8 millimeters I think this is 8 millimeters yes 4 of them the same M3 socket cap screws as before but this time with M3 uh, with uh, 8 millimeters okay like that then like that and finally like that please take a look of the motor the stepper motor connector to be oriented towards the bottom there okay towards the bottom let me start this and it's not by chance but those holes here are m3 threaded The whole sensor is there, visible, okay. The whole sensor is there and it can sense the magnet, okay. Then this is still needs to be uh, tightened, but you are wondering, huh, you have hided the, the screw behind everything, yes. I know, but please look at the design of this side. You have a passing through hole that will allow me to get the screw where I need it to be. Where is the screw? There. And then 
having this there and then screw the screw and then screw the screw yes and then use the island the island wrench with the screw there okay <coughs> so i've assembled the first stepper motor to the system i will need to assemble these two pieces together like that like that using some other boards I will need an M3 20 millimeters in length, 20 millimeters. I will need something I forgot. <coughs> I forgot the washers, the M3 washers, okay, here I have some M3 washers, three of them, no more, like that. Let's go ahead, one M3 Socket cap 20 millimeters long board or screw. I will have one washer here. Then here I have another hole that is dimensioned to accommodate an M3 hole or screw. The I will go ahead, then from this side I will have another M3 washer, I will get through the hole where I have the bearing there, That's why I need to couple everything well together. Okay. Then push once again. I coupled the two airing bone gears together okay then another washer like that and then an M3 nylock nut. I like that. <coughs> and I will use nylock, M3 nylock nuts hexagonal. We'll need a six millimeter um, wrench here to get connected the right way oops 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 Like 
like that. I will use the wrench like that. Go ahead. Then, like this. And, 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 a wrench there. Good, now I can finally get here and okay this is aligned and I will screw okay done okay so this part is done okay now this I need to do the exact same thing from the opposite side I will need an 18 millimeters 18 millimeters and some another three washers okay M3 18 millimeter long uh, bolt or screw with an M3 washer. It seems that this hole is a little bit shorter. No, it's good. Now. the washer here let's get through Good. another washer and another M3 nylock Good, and this is assembled. Let's have this. Just add the nuts to the bottom and the longest side like that like that so the side with no motor with the longest shape here okay so this is almost rounded this is a little more elongate the side with no motor towards the elongate side like that right now like that then 
here you can fix this one by one where you have no motor you will use an M314 M314 M314. I don't have an M314. Okay, here I have an M314. I think this should be. Fourteen millimeters. Yes. So this side here, and just remember that you have an M3 bolt, an M3 nut, a square nut there, here. And let's go up here. One. And from the other side. That, as you can see, this is closest to the base, this is where higher, that's why you use a 14 millimeters here and only 8 millimeters here. 8 millimeters, this should be 8 millimeters. <coughs> This should be six millimeters. Yes, this is eight millimeters. And from the side of the motor here, you will use an M3 eight millimeters screw or bolt there. Fix it. Not yet. Here you have the four M4 M3 nuts. I inserted in the first minutes. Let's get four M3 18 millimeters. Four 18 millimeters. This should be 18 millimeters. Yes, another one. This is 18. This is 18. So, and four and and three washers and I will go this way Good. It starts to get a decent look. Good. Now, another motor. 
Now, this is the fan motor, okay, <coughs> as previously, as the brain will be in the center, in the middle, don't use the motor like that with the connectors towards the outside, but go towards the inside, okay? <coughs> M3 for 8 millimeters. Good. Okay, it's starting to get there, as I just said before. Almost there with the first part. Let me continue. This is the base that will connect this to the slider, to the little carriage, okay, to the slider to the down part of it, to the below part of it. And I will need to connect this big circle here. This is the main container of everything. Okay, this will contain everything like this. And then this other gear will make everything turn, okay, like that. We are not there yet. I will need to connect this, because otherwise I will have difficulties to this. So, the base here uh, is the same, as the same design here concerning the position of the uh, nuts of this entire section. So I will use 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, no, 9, 10, 11. I will not use the most, the outside one, and I will not use one of the those because here I will have the other neodymium magnets. So I will just use 11 of them, like that. <coughs> so I will need to start with some nuts, I will use them as always like that. Good, now 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Mm. Okay. This one will not be used, so let's get this and let's use some <coughs> N3 by 10. This should be 10 millimeters. Yes. OK. 
okay. <coughs> so it's tightened enough. Good. Now let's add another couple of new helium magnets here inside. And this will be the magnets that will uh, tell the, uh, the other sensor, our sensor, that will be placed in here. Okay, where is the ohming? You will see that this <coughs> is almost the same. No, it's practically the same as the other side. So, neodymium is in place. Now, do you remember this little guy here? And now it is completely dry and the bearing inside and outside is working perfectly. Let's add it Yes, I knew, I knew, I knew, I knew Okay, so <coughs> let's recap the good method of assembling the, the bearing there. Outer circle, inner uh, middle circle, okay? Then you put the net part inside. Then you push all the spheres, you place all the spheres, then you push the inner circle, outer, middle, inner circle into position, having a little bit of, applying a little bit of strength to the system, and this, as it has a little movement, it allows a little movement, it will work. Told you this was the first time I was uh, assembling this, so little problems may uh, may occur. Okay. Now I still need to add another hole sensor there, but as these will be open inside, I can place it at a later time. Okay. Maybe yes, maybe not. Let me see if I have some space. Yes, I can have the whole sensor inside. Maybe I can do it right now. Yes, let's do it right now. So another whole sensor, okay, same as before.
magnets are there, your sensor will be placed let's say like that because I still need to place the brain in here in this corner here I will need to place the brain and let's say it is like that let's have a little super glue now it is time to do the final assembly that will be this one, okay? But first, I was almost forgetting one that I'm seeing there. This little thing there that is part of the bearing system that will fix the bearings in place. So you just see those little <laughs> square red rectangle holes you have all along the perimeter in here. Okay, and this needs to be inserted, hoping it will work because I don't know. Let's hope it will work. One. Two. Let's try with this one. Four or three, three, tighten the bearing will not come out. Now let's assemble the remaining things. I will need to use this second gear at the same time so <clears throat> okay, I need to use Okay, like that Then this needs to get Like that, together, pushed, and then let's secure this. I have here in the design 
six corners parted with this I don't know if you can see it let me go this way you have six triangles there oops you don't see let me try this way there six triangles there form okay triangles that need to be aligned with these six parts with these six parts of the superior um, mounting part there of the superior part of the slider of the camera mount okay so i repeat those triangles here uh, you haven't seen anything yes maybe this way uh, yes those pointy triangles here you have six one two three four five and six need to be aligned in line with this cylinder there you have some cylinder there uh, let me try this way you have those cylinder here okay those shaped cylinder that are uh, those one okay those one in order to get everything in line and get the screws through i will use i will use some m3 16 millimeters countersunk head screws and i will use six of them those are not allen wrenchable with allen keys but are uh, phillips screws let's hope i will get in line correctly and that they will and take a look to the countersunk it has this conical head countersunk means that they have a conical head there I think that the first part will be ended there. I am curious to see if it works. And you? Okay, guys, the only thing I pre made is the prototype here of the brain. Let's check if it works. Da -da -da -da. So I will only have two motors. So, pan tilt slide I will do this as a pan and this is the pan Said, or I'm not going inside.
I don't know the outcome, but let's test it. Tilt. And this is the tilt motor. Good. The PS3 controller. Let's have some juice inside. It is switched on. Let's connect this one. Connected. This is slide. Fun. It's not stable, and this is tilt. It's not sliding 360 degrees. So I will only test with the PS3 controller because <coughs> I have that programmed inside. Still need to fix some glitches in the PS4 controller. speed of the tilt is too quick I will need to reduce the amount okay guys it works guys it works so let's have some closure let's have the outro of this first part of the motorized camera slider with pan and tilt features tutorial and it works guys i'm not going very quickly because otherwise the the fact that this this is not affixed to the uh, aluminum bars it will tend to fall down because having the motor from one side it is very heavy at this, mo at this point but uh, all the project is working guys uh, tilt and pan and I still need to work as I just said on the PS4 program but guys first part of the tutorial first time I'm building such a thing uh, first time I'm checking if my own new design work and first time I'm seeing that the bearing system is not that well designed but anyway it can be assembled with a little of skill first time not going well second time maybe third time it will go well and it is not a um, main component of the system the bearings the bearing the, the bearing um, part it just uh, facilitate the rotation of the uh, top part the top uh, camera mount with the base okay and you have a little um, a little uh, vibration uh, coming from the uh, the spheres that are inside but is acceptable anyway those movements will just be done while posing the camera the first time or to get uh, uh, one point and then the other and then the camera slide will slide uh, will just slide uh, not that noisy uh, <laughs> the brain the the prototype of the brain is working, still need to work on the PS4 program, but it's for late. And 
I don't know guys, but every question you have, every point you need to clarify, every error I made that I'm not aware but you have noticed, please comment down below. I will link uh, to the GitHub all I use it here, not the entire project because it is a step-by-step -step one. So I will link uh, all the STL files needed to uh, to uh, to um, to get at, to this point, then the materials I will implement the materials each week, and I will uh, uh, state all the materials I use the the, um, the screws, the the or bolts, the nuts, the motors, and the hole, etc. And then once this tutorial will be completed, you will have the full thing and the full list of components and everything else. I don't post the complete list uh, just because I don't know if I missed something and uh, maybe I will need to add something. But anyway, first step, I joined this point, I will link everything you will need to get to this point. Uh, Maybe I will also add the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, uh, seven more STL files needed for next time that are still on the plywood right now because if you wanted to print them out uh, right now, you can print them out. All the printings will take you at least one week to print. Two days just for the single uh, f uh, foot there. And the two foot there, the two base foot. Uh, what else to say? I don't know. Uh, tell me whatever you want, even if you are not uh, satisfied with this tutorial. And, uh, and nothing else, guys. Please don't forget to subscribe, comment, and give big thumbs up. Thank you for watching. Thank you for bearing my absolutely awful English and see you next time with part 2 of Tommy if you are interested. Bye guys!